All people come to him, come to the way of Sultan Rabia, most honored one and most glorified one. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his best servants to be together. We hope that inshallah Allah accept us to be at the threshold of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa To make us to be as he mentioned in the Holy Quran. مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين to be with these four groups I see the Imam is not available where he went he is hiding When I was young, I used to pray Imam, but I didn't realize it's uh, dangerous, danger. Imam is the first one to be asked. Everyone else, the Imam carry the responsibility. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is correct or not? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our imams sincere and pious. Amen. Because then they can hold, they can carry the ummah. We begin with zikrullah, short zikr, inshallah. Then a suhba, tariqatuna as suhba, wal khayru fil jam'iyya. Our way through our shiuch is companionship. As companions of Prophet وسلم, they are called Ashab al Nabi, or Sahabat al Nabi, or Sahib al Nabi, the friend of Prophet, the companion of Prophet, because he saw Prophet even one time and believed in him, it's enough to be from the Sahaba. Correct. Sorry. And this secret is not in one time. Awliyaullah, they inherit from Prophet. Ashabu Nabi are, no one can reach their ranks, that's for sure. But the Ummah, they have ashab, sahaba, not like sahaba to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if a alim has a group of people, they say this, this group, ashab, dhaq al-alim, ha'uda al-jama'a. This group of people are the friends of this alim or the companion. But not ashab al Nabi, not the same level. So al-ulama, Waratatul Anbiya. Prophet said, Prophet, uh, scholars are the inheritors, are inheritors from prophets. What a great title Allah gave them to ulama. And ulama Waratatul Anbiya, and who is saying it is not a person, normal person in his books wrote like that. It's Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let us be happy. Tariqatuna full of rahmah. Be happy that Allah created you from Ummatul Nabi And don't run and rush to make yourself an Imam. 
run away from it. My advice. Because you have to carry everyone. And you are responsible of what they say. They say, who is you are studying with? I'm studying with X Imam. Then you are, whatever you say, is the Imam said that to you. So it's better always, especially I'm speaking to people who are rushing and running to be someone, something. Not like Sheikh Tariq. I'm not speaking like these sincere people, student of very highly scholars in Islam in this time, without mentioning names. But Alhamdulillah, Allah, especially in this last 10 years, Allah has dressed some ulama to stand up. And now ulama al ummah are standing up for the love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is it. We don't want to go left or right. We don't want to say, Salafi, they say this, Wahhabi, they say this. Rahman al Anfihim, in spite of their noses, we love Prophet and we love that hadith that he mentioned, Yuhsharu al Maru Ma'man Ahab, people will be resurrected with whom they love. <laughs> Ask yourself, I love Prophet or no? <coughs> if I love Prophet, I do salawat on Prophet. When I love and I show love to him, I do salawat on him. It's not? When you love someone, you mention his name too much. Al-Dhakirin Allah wa al-Dhakirat, al-Ladina yazkuroon Allah qiyama wa qu'udan wa ala shunubihim. Al-Dhakirin Allah kathiran wa al-Dhakirat. He said kathiran, too much, because out of love. So, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, said it clear to Sahaba that people will be resurrect, resurrected with whom they love. That's why he said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده مولده ووالده والناس أجمعين. No one is considered a real believer. There are lovers in Iman. Until I, he has to love me more than his brother, his father, and والناس أجمعين and everyone else. You love, you love your watch more than anyone else, is not? You love your car more than anyone else. And we don't think to love Prophet also. This is a nice car, I love it. This is a nice house, I love it. No one said, this is a Prophet, I love him. And he is caring for us and giving us way out, many way, way to be out of punishment in the day of judgment. But we are not uh, considering this. Like that Prophet Sallallahu has mentioned that read read holy quran read don't keep the quran yatim yatim orphan on the shelf read and if you have a library in the house and you have many masahif we cannot say many qurans because quran is one you cannot make it plural but many masahif Mas'haf is Qur'an, but is the papers, Sahifa. 
You have many, try when you complete one, go to the second one. Same, but not to leave the Quran yatim because Quran is going to make shafa'a for you in the day of judgment. People, they keep one, one mushaf, one, we say Quran, we cannot say one Quran, but we can say one mushaf, and then when you fi finish, the other one is calling you. The one that Prophet said, because you are reading And the, the words has to be carefully picked up. You have, you cannot say you have reading something. It's not something. You have a reading, you are reading Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ancient words. Kalamul Qadim. <coughs> you must be happy. Now if they find uh, a mushaf in a, a bazaar in a, in a, where they sell antique, they sell it as antique. How you dare to say to yourself it's antique, Quran is antique? They buy it not because of the words in it. They buy it because it's antique. <laughs> and the price goes higher and higher if it is old. That even for leave Quran on the side, you have a book from 1,000 years ago. What they do with it? It's big relics. Any book. They buy it, they keep it, they save it. It's a treasure. What do you think about hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It's not treasure. It's higher level than any treasure. What do you think about the Holy Quran, it's Allah's words. How Allah will punish you when you are reading his words? You are saying, you are reading and memorizing his words. Allah will be happy. Quran will be happy. You will be happy. Although, when you read Quran, you say to yourself, I'm reading every day one juzu, one chapter, yani 30 pages, 25 pages. And, and sometimes they, when you are reading, they look how many pages left. How many pages left? Move this to check. Is that? Because you have to finish the one result to go to what's waiting at you for you at the door. What? Well, I finish. Ah, okay, but well, that's, that's two left. Then Sajda comes. Oh, and now in the time of Sajda, you have to make Sajda because it's a Sajda place. So, but you have to think that I am your Rabbi holding your ancient word and reading with my eyes that you gave to me. Don't make me blind. Awliya Allah, they can dive in, in the ocean of Holy Quran. So, Prophet ﷺ mentioned that you have to read Quran. If you read Quran, you will get one reward. Lahu <laughs> ajr. He has ajr, he has re reward, a reward. And that, when Allah say, when Prophet says that anyone who reads Quran, lahu <laughs> ajr, has a reward, it is, uh, is, that reward has no limits because it is compared that Allah is giving to you because you are reading Quran and Quran cannot be compared to anything.
And Prophet said, look, how Allah and his Prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu what Allah gave him of ilm and knowledge. A convert, he became Muslim. Does not read Quran, doesn't know. Because the one who reads Quran, Lahu Ajr. The one who doesn't need the Quran, he doesn't know how to read Quran. But his intention is to read Quran. But due, due to so many reasons today, Muslims are afraid to expose themselves that they are Muslim. And within the Muslims, there are Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah are not exposing themselves too much because of the, what's going crazy in the Arab countries. So a convert wants to read, that I cannot read. I wish, Ya Rabbi, I say Shahada every day, make me convert every day. Because a convert, when he say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, all his sins are waived. <coughs> that if, if these sins, if, the, if whatever he did in his life, and at the end it's waived, because he said what? Because he said shahada, means accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator. So if we as Muslims say shahada, Allah will give more even, or we give, give us as he give them. Why the requirement of shahada in the tahiyyat? Why we say shahada in tahiyyat? To revert you back to what you were. To convert you before you finish your prayers, because it is the last thing to say on prayer before the salawat. And even salawat at the end in tahiyyat is not obligatory. You, tahiyyat al Ibrahimiyya. It's one salawat on Prophet, one, only one line is enough. So when you are uh, reading, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet said in his hadith, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَلُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Every amal you do is according to the intention. And for everyone, whatever he intended, he will get. Okay, I intended, Ya Rabbi, to read Quran, but I don't know. I am convert. Allah will leave them, struggling. Prophet said that his sins will be waived. So me say another time, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Another time your sins are waived. Every moment in your life, every moment in your life, you are doing sins. Shirk khafi. Akhwaf ma akhaf ala ummati as shirk al khafi. The most I fear for my ummah is the hidden shirk. So don't say I'm Muslim. Yes, you are Muslim. Don't say I'm mu'min. Yes, you are mu'min. But you didn't reach that level, high level. Still you need to, to work out yourself. So if they say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, their, their, their sins are waived. They become Muslim. And what about us? If we say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, we will not get other, our sins waived. As they are, their sins are waived? It, for sure. Because your niyyah, as a Muslim, your niyyah is to read. But you cannot read. You don't know, even Muslims don't know how to read. Many, they send their, their children to schools 
they don't teach them religion, they don't know how to read. With all this, we are being given a way out. He said, Man kara al Quran, falahu ajr. That, non, that convert or revert, what is his job? He has to do, he has to do shahada, his sins are waived. We do shahada, our sins are waived. We read Quran, he, he doesn't know how to read Quran. He is enough to point he will read Quran in the future. What Prophet said? The one that doesn't know how to read Quran, but try his best, even he is yuta'ta' fil Quran. Means stutter. He is stutter. What that word means? Stutter. Stutter. I say, uh, imitate. Hamna, 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 hamna. Ah, okay. And then, falahu <laughs> ajran. He will get two rewards. Allah. To the one who knows how to read Quran, takes one reward. To the one who doesn't know but he's struggling to read, he will get two rewards. And what best, what better than to have two rewards because you are reading Quran and you are muta'ti'. Uh, you, your tongue is not pronouncing it well. You, I uh, say it. Uh, 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 alif. Huh? Alif. Huh? You heard it. Falahu <laughs> ajran. You will get two. Look what Allah is giving reward to save the ummah of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet gave us signs. He gave us signs that we have to pay attention. You don't pay attention, it's your problem. If you pay attention, then you will be able to save yourself and the others. So, what he said, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi afdal salatu wa salam, he is predicting something that's going to happen in the future. If people will say, why he didn't predict? Because he has ulumul awwalin wal akhirin, knowledge of before and after. Why he did not predict sciences, scientific discoveries today? Prophet predicted everything. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusihim. We are going to show them our signs in the horizons. And in the future, Allah is saying, didn't give order to Prophet to show them because at that time they were busy in spreading Islam and Sharia, spreading their love of Prophet spreading what we need to build our countries, a social life. So he delayed the scientific things. The one who went to Kaaba Kausaini or Adna doesn't know the road. He, he, he went passing through everything that in front of him. Seeing everything. He knows everything. Reaching Kaaba Kausaini or Adna not knowing what he saw. Immediately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pour in the heart of Prophet everything. Even today, don't 
misunderstand or don't deny because then you will be committing a sin and that is shirk the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Bilal went over the Kaaba to call Azan, isn't it? All the Muslims were very happy. And they say, we're saying takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, isn't it? He went above the Kaaba. Means Prophet gave him through his heart knowledge, not knowledge of earth, he made him to get knowledge as he was moving toward top of Kaaba to reach knowledge of Ulum al Awalin wal Akhirin. A drop of that. To reach above, like Sayyidina Bilal, is not like today they go upstairs, they go up on the top of Kaaba, they don't know anything. His heart was open to receive knowledges from Kaabatullah going up. So Prophet وسلم, if Sayyidina Bilal went to Kaaba and Sahaba were saying Allahu Akbar, what do you think about Prophet going to Kaaba, Kausaini, or Adna? All paradises, angels were saying Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. At least to, to, uh, to welcome him. And he was welcomed, passing by every paradise. Well, first one, second one. Why he went one after one? Can't go directly. But he wants to show, Ya Rabbi, I am your servant. I don't go beyond my limit. Although if he wanted to know, Allah will let him to do. But gave him Jibreel alayhi salam. Come with him. To teach us that we need a guide. He took him from first heaven to the second. If he goes to the third, he cannot without the guide. Although he can, but out of respect, he stood by his limit. Man arifa hadda wa kafa inda. Who knows his limits, stand by his limits. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. Of high character. Addabani rabbi fa ahsana ta'adibi. Allah perfected me. So he steps, stopped by where he has to stop. He didn't go quickly. And they said, who is with you, ya Jibreel? And the answer came from Jibreel Muhammad And they asked, he was being ordered to come? He was being sent? Yes, he was being sent. Why angels has to ask these questions? Allah wants to show them that he is superior on you. He's higher than everyone else. You don't need to ask these questions. I'm raising him to a place that they, you, you cannot understand, you cannot see. Kaaba Kausaini Aw Adna. Jibreel was not able to go. That what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ummah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ulum al awwalina wal akhirin. When you when you see something Massive, great, you say, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. An event that happened nicely or something you happen, you say, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. When a disaster happened, you still say, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. To calm that disaster down. What happened? Two days ago, 
is not something that is usual, it's unusual. From where this storm comes suddenly in the uh, sandstorm, all over the Arab countries, that they were not able to see anything. Everywhere is sand, which we, didn't, we never saw such things in all our life. They saw it in Kuwait or in Saudi Arabia, they saw some, but not as strong as this. My hand, not in your hand. Not in your crane for expansion. But my, my, my way that I show you, I am the creator and you are my servant. Say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. That's why it was a requirement. The prayer is not accepted, all the prayer, when you miss shahada at the end. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness. I'm seeing. Uh, one time I, in Indonesia, they asked me to speak about Shahada. And it is a, a very difficult question. Ulama knows this. Johala don't know. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah ulama, they know, mashallah, they are very strong. I, I, I respect them and I love them, especially Dr. Ali Juma and many others, like Omar bin Hafiz, Ali Jafri, all these. There were at least 25,000 people. This, the whole streets were blocked. And to say an shahada, whatever is sent to me, I said it. But the main question is when you say in Arabic, ashhadu, what is the meaning, Dr. Tariq? You witness. I witness. I witness in this moment and say ashhadu, shahida in the past. Shuhud, witnesses. Ashhadu, I witness, I bear witness. I am witnessing something I am seeing. It's not? Present tense. Present tense. Ashhadu what? I bear witness, Ya Rabbi, I bear witness that there is no creator, la ilaha, and la ilaha illallah. But I'm lying to myself. It is not yet the level of shahada. Because you are not witnessing anything. You are saying it. But you are not witnessing. He didn't enter in the level of visualizing things, visions. Sayyidina Umar calling Haritha from Medina to Munawwara, calling his general uh, army, uh, the general of his army. He, they were fighting in Damascus, like 3,000 kilometers far. And he is saying, Ya Sari al Jabal. Ya Sari, be, be careful. Behind you, the mountain, take the mountain. He saw him. And he spoke with him and Saria in Damascus and Sayyidina Umar in Medina. That's vision. Maqam shuhud. Maqam ashhadu. To bear witness. To see what cannot be seen. Allah gave it. And he said it. In the hadith of Prophet, when he said, 
ما زال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به until the end when my, my servant love me I will love him when I love him I give him what an ear cannot what never heard of that and an eye will never saw that I give him from my treasures are we getting are we getting with his rahma yes Amen. with our amal no so ashhadu an la i bear witness and la ilaha illa allah is not completed wa anna muhammadan rasulullah and i bear witness that muhammad is your message messenger means i have to see i am seeing when he put his hand he, uh, when he reached Kaaba Kausaini or Adna, and there he said, Kalimatu Tawheed. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. You cannot, your Tawheed is not completed if you don't say Muhammadun Rasulullah. When you say, I bear witness, Muhammadun Rasulullah, they pour in your heart without you feeling, they pour in your heart. علوم الأولين والآخرين. A drop of that is enough. So Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم want to. I'm sorry. Want to prepare us and want to notify us by his prediction. It's not his prediction. He's seeing it. Sayyid Nawar was able to see. Sayyidina Muhammad was able to see Kaaba Kausaini or Adna. No, no comparison. Sayyid al-Rusul. He, he said, An Abi Musa al-Ash'ari, Prophet sallallahu alaihi in the in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim he put they put a section on the signs of the last days that Prophet predicted, and for sure Sheikh Tariq knows that. In order not to make mistake, an Abi Musa al Ash'ari wa Abdullah bin Mas'ud, in the bayna yaday saati ayyaman yanzilu fiha al jahl, wa yurfa'u fiha al ilm. ويكثر فيها الهرج والمرج أي القطر حديث البخاري Prophet saying 1400 years ago 1436 that between the hand of the last days means between the signs of the last days from the signs of the last days there are days that ignorance will descend on earth. Ayyaman yanzilu fiha al-jahil. Ignorance will fill the earth. Is it not now today? Wherever you go, there is ignorance. There is jahil. Jahil has many meanings, but they take the normal one, the middle one, or the first one. Ignorance between the Ummah, between all kinds of different people, there is ignorance. Knowledge will be lifted up. There will be no more knowledge. Today, what is the knowledge? Islamic knowledge? We see uh, the ignorance that happening in the Middle East, in Pakistan is also, in these countries, Middle East, count them, from Morocco to Algeria, to Tunisia, to Libya, uh, to Egypt, to Syria, to Lebanon, and to the other, Yemen, and the others. 
and the subcontinent. Yemen wa Akhawatiya. Yemen wa Akhawatiya. وَيُرْفَعْ فِيهَا الْعَلِمْ Knowledge will be lifted up. There is no more knowledge. Every knowledge, don't consider this is a knowledge. This one wali can see the whole, can show you the whole world if the ummah was on the right way. Don't think technology is what he means, profit by alim. Alim, alim al-Qur'an. Utlubu al-ilma wa law fi al-seen. Seek knowledge even in China means seek knowledge of the Holy Spirit far away. It's not when you read Holy Quran, Allah will open. But read, yani, to 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 travel from here to Yam to to China. How many hours? Sixteen. Sixteen hours. Means here, utlub al ilm wa Spend sixteen hours also. On, on the Holy Quran to understand it. So? No, I'm saying. Reach, uh, no, uh, seek knowledge, even in China, which is 16 hours. Okay, spend 16 hours in your country reading Holy Quran. As if you are going there to study. There are many people, they say, I want to go there to study. You study it. There is, uh, Spend 16 hours, Allah will, get, will open on you. Why awliya they put their, their followers in seclusion? Because seclusion, you will get inspirations when you are reading Quran. When you are reading hadith, you get inspiration from hadith. Not everything, they have to give it to you with a uh, breast, what now? Feeding you with the spoon, the, ch the feeding is ch small. Ch huh? Spoon feeding. Spoon feeding. And too much harj. And they ask Ya Rasulullah wa man harj called al qatl al qatl. Killings and killings. Every day there are people being killed. Narrated by Bukhari. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And I mean, Ashrat is Saati and Yatakara was the man. From the signs of the last days, time will collapse, time will become shorter. A time uh, to Aulia, uh, when they move, say Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, they reach east and west. For normal people, the China now takes 16 hours to reach, as you said. If you want to take it in a normal way from far time, it needs one year to reach there. Imagine before like 60, 70, 100 years, not really even 100 years, people they used to go walking to Hajj, walking in the desert, they go caravans. They spend one year to reach Hajj. They perform their Hajj. They stay there as much as they like. There was no visa there. And you come back one year. Today you go by plane and you say, I'm tired. <laughs> when they go for, for Hajj, they do uh, uh, meeting, sitting together uh, that, inshallah, if you come alive, alhamdulillah, we'll be very happy. But if you are dead, may Allah bless you. Means person is going to die. And his death, is, he's going to look at in front of him when they were going to Hajj for one year going and one year coming. There was one person in the time of Grand Sheikh, that every step he step, he goes from Syria to, to Hajj. Every uh, step he step, he pray two rakats. The step one, he stops, he pray two rakats, then he continue. Pray two rakats, step, pray two rakats. Three years to reach. 
today what we are comparing to these people what what where, where is our level and today they, they tell you oh it's difficult to go I will go after I reach 70 years of age second he said from the signs of the an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu arda and I mean ashrat is the zaman the time will be shortened before you you need to take time to go from one place to another today you are reaching in a short time you are reaching everywhere wayankus alim and knowledge will diminish Today, the knowledge is diminishing. If you if you go and find these old books that has been written in uh, like 500 years, 700 years, 1,000 years, how much they were sophisticated in the handwriting and spending their time in all kind of knowledge, grammars, Arabic grammar, uh, uh, Nice books, Kawad al Arabiya, Fi Tafsir al Quran, Fi Hadith, everything. They were meticulous in the point. It is red or blue or black or or any kind. Today there is no such thing. That's why Yankus al Alam. Alam will be diminished. Watadhar al Fitan. And too much fitna appears. Everywhere there is fitna nowadays. You cannot go outside without seeing a hundred of fitness. وَيَكْثُرُ الْحَرْجِ قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ وَمَا الْحَرْجِ قَالَ الْقَتْلِ الْقَتْلِ الْبُخَارِي Too much killings mentioned by Imam al-Bukhari. This is important. وَعَنْ عَمْرُ بْنِ الْعَاسِ قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الله لا يقبض لا يقبض العلم انتزاعا ينتزعه من العباد ولكن يقبض العلم بقبض العلماء. He said that I heard Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying Allah سبحانه وتعالى will not take the the علم away but he takes it by the علماء will die. There is no substitute. No one can replace them. Every century it is less and less and less and less until the day of judgment. حَتَّى إِذَا لَمْ يَبْقَ عَالِمًا تَخَذَ النَّاسُ رُؤُوسًا جُهَالًا Until there will be no more ulama, except few, people will follow ignorant ulama. People who claim that they are ulama, people follow them. When they follow them, they fall into the mistakes. فَسُئِلُوا فَأَفْتَوْا They ask them, they give them fatwa. Although they are not ulama. فَأَفْتَوْا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ فَضَلُّوا وَأَضَلُّوا They make fatwa without ilm, so they deviate and they make the others deviate. This is what you are seeing today. Ibn Mas'ud said, this is Ibn Mas'ud, he said, عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْعِلْمِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُكْوَطْ وَقَبْدُهُ ذِهَابَ أَهْلِهِ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْعَمَلْ فَإِنَّ أَحَدُكُمْ لَا يَدْرِي مَتَى يَفْتَقِرْ إِلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْعِلْمِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالتَّنَطْعُ وَالتَّعَمُّكُ وَالتَّعَمُّكُ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْعَطِيقِ Ibn Mas'ud said that be, be careful, look, look after ilm. If ilm, you lost it, you will lose so much, you cannot gain it anymore. And be careful not to be, I know you don't know. And this is what we see today. I know, no, I don't know, you know. You know, I don't know. What ta'amuk? And don't go too deep. Because when you go deep, one word becomes 
make make a mistake or make if you are not alim you will doubt everything that's why i asked sheikh tarik if he, by his permission inshallah uh, to to teach aqidat uh, ahlus sunnah wal jamaah every saturday every saturday he will be here after the zikr or before the zikr before the zikr what time Six o'clock. Six o'clock, Sheikh Tariq is saying. So I, I, I ask you, I ask, I'm please imploring you to come as much as possible and attend uh, the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Then you know where you're standing. And it is not easy because it is mostly technical words. So make sure that you come not uh, now i'm sick if you love me and you come for me come for him so, because the, it is a necessity to learn aqidat ahl sunnah wal jamaah at least you know where you are standing <coughs> now if i ask anyone do you know about aqidah i i i believe i know that no one will raise his hand uh, might be you وعليكم بالعطيق always seek the old this is no more old follow the old ones the ancient ones those who came before you means follow the aqidah or what they have registered and they wrote in their books don't follow this new salafi wahhabi we never heard about it when I came to United States, 1990, 1990, 1990, 21st of August, or 23rd, I think it's 21st. I went, I came to New York, Jersey City. I have some cousins. I stayed with them, went for Jum'a, and the Imam uh, sitting, I didn't know he's the one who is sitting near me, going to go on the member, and when they called Azan, he went up is in New York, not in New York, on the border of New Jersey, New York, and one of the big mosques. I went up, and that, and that person went up to give the Jum'ah, and he was blind. Aqidat Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, if there is someone who is not blind, he is the one that makes the Jum'ah, not the blind one. You cannot have the blind one to do when there is someone competent, competent? Competent. Competent? To, like him, but he's not blind, he has the priority to lead the Jum'ah. And what he spoke about, about that the no, there is no such thing in Islam, Mawlid al-Nabi. And anyone who do Mawlid al-Nabi is kafir. And he is blind. So he's doubly blind. Doubly blind, fully blind. So I left, I went to another one next week, the week after. Similar. Not blind, but the, it was the Mawlid al-Nabi month. He was attacking the Mawlid al-Nabi. So our aqidah is important to know uh, the realities of the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu because it is in the aqidah. So, alaykum bil atiq, he said, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't follow, you, uh, you are right, I am wrong, you are wrong, you are right. No, leave it. Don't discuss with them, because there is no way to bring them back. Bring the new ones. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْعَطِيقِ Always keep the old one, his barakah for you. His barakah for the house, his barakah for the masjid, his barakah for the ummah. You go to, I went to India, and I saw all these atik 
the ancient masajid, ancient uh, uh, graves, ancient uh, maqams, ancient uh, uh, centers, they kept it very nice. Pakistan, I believe, is the same. But they are blowing some away. Yemen, the also problem. Uh, Middle East, too much. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, atik, atik Allah's old house." It means Allahu Akbar. Keep for a the Kaaba. Allahu Akbar. 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 Allahu Bless us. Amen. We don't continue. It's enough. Bi hurmat al Habib, bi hurmat al Fatiha. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa bisir surat al Fatiha. One last request. It's for your benefit and our benefit all. Sheikh uh, Tariq will begin Saturday for his uh, first halaqa. And uh, halaqa to zikr is uh, Riyadhul Jannah. Allahu Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a famous hadith to his Sahaba, إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَادِ الْجَنَّةِ فَارْتَعُوا قال وما رياض الجنة يا رسول الله قال حلق الذكر. If you pass by the circles of uh, by the gardens of paradise, sit when you pass through them. And they said, يا رسول الله, what are the garden of paradise? He said حلق الذكر. Circles of paradise. Anywhere around the world who is sitting and making ذكر at that moment, Allah would dress that jama'ah as if they are in paradise. So I will ask uh, those who are interested for the halakha, raise their hand. <laughs> Do we need to write names? <laughs> I, I, I'm sleeping or I'm seeing correct, correctly. Who is uh, ready for that? All of them. If they don't come, tell me. <laughs> uh, You've said everything, Sidi. Uh, uh, Sidi Hashem was talking about the Shahada and the Quran and, and knowledge, and it got me thinking that uh, one of the mashayikh of, of our tariq of the Shadhiliya, Abu Hassan al, uh, Abu Abbas al-Mursi, who was, if the Prophet Sallallahu ever vanished from my gaze, I would not consider myself a Muslim. Because these people, they see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in everything that they do. And every moment of their life is to emulate the blessed life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is uh, the witnessing, and this is what demarcates the people of Allah from the rest of creation, and what demarcates the people of knowledge from the people of ignorance. Is that the people of knowledge, it's not just outer knowledge. Sometimes outer knowledge is dangerous. Because you think you know, but you don't know. And in uh, logic, we study that there's two types of ignorance. There's jahl, there's ignorance, and there's jahl murakkab, and there's compound interest, ignorance. Compound ignorance is somebody is ignorant of their own ignorance. But the ignorant person, they're more knowledgeable because they know they're ignorant. And there's a famous uh, uh, shami poem that escapes me now of Hakim Tuma. It's, the, it's like folkloric... Uh, character who is like the idiot and uh, the donkey is reciting the poem and he said I am jahil and my rider is murakkab and it's a play on words because the rider the hakim tuma murakkab or rakib in Arabic is the rider but he's also murakkab because he has the compound ignorance so the donkey knows that he's ignorant but the hakim 
Toma, he's ignorant of his ignorance. Anyway, so outward knowledge can be dangerous because sometimes people, they confuse information for knowledge. In Arabic, there's a difference between ilm and ma'lumat, knowledge and, and just data points, like Wikipedia, just data points. And I was, when Sidi was talking, I remember I had this guy in, in high school, he gave me this complex because every morning he would come and he was like a walking ESPN, like he had memorized all of the baseball stats and the basketball stats and the football stats and I felt like I don't know anything. And I remember I used to tell my mom, when you wake me up, make sure that the sports section is you know, on the table so I can memorize every, it was just malumet, it was just information. You know, where, where is he now with all of that junk that he had memorized? And sometimes people, they confuse that for knowledge. So when we talk about knowledge and we talk about witnessing, we're talking about something else. Abu Abbas al-Mursi, for him to say that لَوْ غَابَ عَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ If the Prophet ﷺ vanished from me, I would not consider myself a Muslim. That's something else. That's a matter of the heart. And that's why Allah has blessed us with this way. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this tradition of linking us back to the Prophet ﷺ. And then the secret is not in the lines of the books. The secret is in the heart of the men and the women that carry the inner knowledge of the Prophet ﷺ. And then we were talking about the Qur'an. And my, my shaykh, he, he narrates this story to me that when he went to Al-Azhar to study a recitation, he studied with a very famous shaykh who was the, the shaykh of all of the reciters of the Qur'an. And he has memorized the Qur'an in its ten recitations. And he has memorized all of the poems that teach you the rules. This is a very difficult... So imagine memorizing one thing ten ways. I mean, it's difficult to memorize as it is, but ten ways. So he narrates the story to me. And he said, this shaykh, you know, there's no uh, good life for the ulama. The ulama are always struggling. So one time this sheikh, he was so poor and he said, you know what, I'm going to just give up on this Qur'an stuff. I'm going to go work in construction and make, make ends meet. So he gave up teaching and he went to go in construction. And then another sheikh in Al-Azhar, he came to visit him one day. He knocked on the door, the sheikh opened the door and he slapped him in the face. And he was like, you know, stars and circles and all this, like a cartoon character. And he's like, why did you do that? And he says, Sayyidina, oh, he said, I'm so, so sorry. But Sayyidina al Hussein, he keeps coming to me every night in my dream. And he says, go to the sheikh and slap him. <laughs> and I had to. And he said, that was so good. Slap me again. And he slapped him again. And he slapped him up a couple of times. And the sheikh <laughs> narrates the story. This is a true story. And he says, every time he slapped me, some of what I had remembered came back to me. The poems that I had remembered to teach the Quran and... I decided from that then and there I would not give up the Qur'an. And he says to my shaykh, he says, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, for 40 years I have not read the Qur'an. And my shaykh is like, what are you talking about? You're like the shaykh of the, the reciters. He's like, because the Qur'an is in front of me. All of it. For the last 40 years. Compare this to what Al-Habib says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says about the khawarij. You know, the people that have left this religion and and have this false sense of piety, he says, they read the Qur'an night and day. You compare your prayer to their prayer and you feel that you are deficient, but the Qur'an does not penetrate their hearts. So it's not enough just to read the Qur'an, it's not just enough to read the knowledge or to you know, do the class on aqidah, we want this to penetrate our hearts. And this is the real true knowledge. And this is why, as uh, Sidi Hisham said, the Sahaba, only one glance of the Prophet Wasallam makes uh, this person a companion. All they needed was one glance. And the lady who describes the Prophet Wasallam in the hijrah, you know, the hilya that we have, all she did is she saw him once. You know, he had the moon-shaped eyes and a black beard and X number of white hairs and cheekbone and all of these things from just one glance. So this is the kind of knowledge that it penetrates. And this is why we have to understand that the real difference between the people of knowledge, the real difference between the people that understand and carry this tradition and represent Ahl Sunnah and the ignorant people is that their hearts are open. And when your heart is open, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala flushes inside. And the love of the Prophet ﷺ permeates every cell in your being. And this is why one of the salawat that we have is we say, Allahumma salli ala arsh istiwa'i rahmatik. Allah give prayers and salutations on the throne in which you manifested your mercy, meaning the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. Because the heart can become a throne of God where Allah can manifest inside the person and flush this person and permeate this person's being with this love and then you reflect this love and then you reflect this beauty and you reflect this real knowledge no matter how many, you know, I studied at Princeton, you know, no one believed we weren't allowed to believe in Princeton right, these people had more knowledge than many of the shiuch I studied with at Al-Azhar I had people that, I had a, a, a Jewish professor who had memorized all of the verses of the Sharia verses in the Qur'an a new Hanafi fiqh, a new Zaydi fiqh, a new, I don't know, all this weird stuff I've never even heard of. But he wasn't a believer. And I benefited from that, you know, knowledge and those uh, data points. But this is not what we're here to talk about. This is not what is going to carry us on the, uh, on the final hour. The Prophet Sallallahu says, the first person that will be judged on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah will say, come. And he says, tell everyone what, what I did for you. I said, ha, you gave me the Qur'an, I memorized the Qur'an, and I taught the Qur'an. And all these people learned the Qur'an because of me. And Allah Ta'ala says, you lie. You only did this so people will say of you that you are a reciter of the Qur'an, that you are a teacher of the Qur'an, into the hellfire. He says, you, come here. Tell everyone what I gave you. He said, oh, you gave me knowledge. I went to Princeton, I went to Al-Azhar. I have all these books. I had all of these classes. I taught Aqidah and the Zawiyah. And he says, you lie, you only did that so people will say, Dr. Fulan, Professor Fulan, Sheikh Fulan, into the hellfire. You come here, what did I give you? He said, you gave me wealth, and I build the zawis, and I build the masajid, and I spent on the maqams, and all of these things. He says, you lie, you only did this so people will say you are generous, into the hellfire. So, you know, we have this expression, you can't judge a book by its cover. Well, we can't judge what's on the outside because it's on the inside. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except the person that comes to Allah with a sound heart. And this tradition of tasawwuf, this tradition or this path of the, the turuq, this is the path that purifies our heart, that makes it open for this type of knowledge that transforms, that transforms us. So that when we read the Qur'an, it's like, oh my God. You know, the Sahaba, they read five verses at a time. They wouldn't move until they understood it and they memorized it and they acted on it. And the five, by the way, is a secret, which is why in the Mus'haf that we have now of, uh, of Medina, which is like, kind of like the standard, if you look, each page is 15 lines. And this is like a Turkish thing, the Turkish compilers of the Qur'an, they call this Dal uh, Kanar or something like that. Maybe Rauda can, uh, since she's came, come back, can tell us the exact Turkish. But there is a hadith that the Qur'an is memorized five by five. So they put the Mus'haf, the, the pages, Five, fifteen verses, you know, five, five, five. Allah. And then the ulama, they made this ijtihad to give the thirty ajza. You know, the Qur'an wasn't like that. It didn't come down in these chapters. This was the ijtihad of the Muslims. The thirty chapters, so we read a chapter a day. And then each juz is cut into two hizb. Right? You, you, you have half a juz and half a juz. And even this word hizb, we have our awrad, we call them hizb in nasr. And I'm sure they're the ahzab of the, of the Naqshbandiya. Because at that time, this word, the idea, the Muslims were concerned with, what do I do every day? Like, how, how do I keep my diet of spirituality every day? So I'm going to read a portion of the Qur'an in the morning and a portion in the afternoon, and I'm going to read this dhikr and this word. And then the hizb is cut even more into force and so on and so forth. And that's what all those markings on the mushaf are for, to help facilitate but as we make our efforts to learn the Qur'an and learn the Arabic and all of these, we have to understand that what we want is we want it to affect our hearts. We want to understand the real meaning. You know, but we'll never understand its absolute meaning. As Sidi was saying that the Prophet Sallallahu knowledge is in constant ascent, constant improvement, constant ascension. He is in a constant isra and ma'raj to the Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Which is why he says in the hadith, إِنَّهُ لَيُغَانُ عَلَى قَلْبِ وَإِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ فِي الْيَوْمِ مِئَةُ مَرَّةً My heart becomes clouded and I say astaghfirullah a hundred times a day. Abu Hassan al-Shadili, he said, 
how is the Prophet's heart get clouded? And then he heard a voice, he said, clouds of light, not clouds of darkness. Every moment the Prophet ﷺ sees the previous moment, he says, Astaghfirullah, look where I was and look where I am now. And then one moment, look where I was and look where I am now, Astaghfirullah. Different than our Astaghfirullah, <laughs> of course. But the Prophet ﷺ is in constant ascension. So the Qur'an, as Sidi was saying, is the eternal, uncreated word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you're dealing with something like that, you're dealing with something that's infinite. Each verse and each letter, it's infinite meanings. The alif, the lam, and the meme, infinite meanings. So you'll never, it's an ocean, you'll never take it all. However, when a drop of that knowledge enters into the heart and permeates our being, we become transformed, we're like superhuman, we're like superheroes. Literally, we're like superheroes. And that's what like, the Sahaba were like superheroes. All of them. They were lights and they were stars that guide us in the night. Even though outwardly they had their day jobs, a carpenter and an architect and an engineer and a physician and a chemist, all they had their day jobs. But they were superheroes because of that knowledge. You know, there were some Sahaba that didn't memorize the Qur'an. The mujtahids of the Sahaba is like a, only a couple percentage of the Sahaba. Some of the ulama say there were only 20 mujtahids of the Sahaba and there were over 100,000 Sahaba. So when you think of the companions, sometimes we think of these all super pious people like in a library or something like that. It wasn't like that. They had real, well, they had other jobs. They had other function, worldly functions. But it was what was inside that changed them. It was that witnessing. That they witness La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah all the time, at every moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change us Amen. for the better. Amen. And may He make our voice supersede the voice of ignorance. Amen. This is the age of ignorance. SubhanAllah, as more sophisticated as we get with technology, the more ignorant humanity becomes. It's unbelievable. And it's a sign of the of the final hour. But alhamdulillah, Allah has given us, our mashayikh has given us, Allah has protected this deen. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. Allah says, we have revealed this Qur'an and we will protect it. You know these two pages that they found in Birmingham? Everyone's like, oh, oh, look, we found the Qur'an from the... We know that. We know that it's unchanged. I don't need this discovery to increase my faith. But it was too good. So now they say it was actually before the Prophet's time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, it was the the prequel or something like that. Even more of a proof that the Qur'an is unchanged. Every letter and every verse, no discrepancy. So Allah has protected this and preserved it, and it's for us to grab it. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam. Now who is coming for the Aqidah's... Uh, <laughs> less people now. <laughs> Who is coming for Aqidah lesson? Fatiha ala niyat al tawfiq, inshaAllah. Akam al-Sanashiyah.